Welcome to this video. My name is Rajbir and now we're going to begin exploring Dashboard 2.0. So I was playing around a little bit with Dashboard 2.0 elements and it's very interesting to work on that. So there are some new features which are not on Dashboard 1.0. So I'm going to explore several features of Dashboard 2.0, which includes uh, visual gauges and charts and the UI template, which has been uh, exclusively updated to show various elements. So I'm going to show you a small demo now in this video, which will highlight the different elements I'm going to explain in the further tutorials in detail. So let's begin with a demo example. So in this case, I have already created a demo dashboard for you, and we're going to see how we are going to create this one as well and explore different features of that. So for example, we will begin with the form. So this is my form entry, and you can see that here you have a checkbox, which was not in dashboard 1.0. So here, if I, for example, I type my name and I type my email address and small option if it's already subscribed or not, you can select that and click Submit. And once you do that, I show the entry in a table. So if this you can imagine if you are uh, want to store some data in a database. Here, the database is just some variables. So I'm just storing that into the table. And, but you can also do that using some MySQL or MongoDB database as well. But this is just an example to show how you can use forms and you can store the information in the table and you can view that as well, okay? And if I just do another example, let's say I put John and I put John at abc.com and I don't click subscribe and then it will show it is not subscribed as false. So you can also customize based on if you don't tick, what do you want to mention here, okay? So we will explore form, we will explore tables, and this is just a button to clear the data. And then you have some input field where you can put some number and then you can see its value here. So this is my input element, that's my output element. Then we will see some buttons which can be used to turn on and off some output. This is just a Boolean input. This is for true and that's for false, and this you can indicate using an LED, very interesting LED. And then you can have uh, multi-group buttons where you can select the recipe. So this can be used for a recipe or it can be used for some other functions. We will explore that. Then you have some input for selecting which entry you want to use, for example, with inlay or without inlay. And based on that, you can also enable or disable the dropdown. For example, if I go for with inlay, I can select which inlay I want. If I don't want any inlay, you can, you can disable that. So how to do that, we will see that as well. And then you will see some sliders and so sliders are used to change the entry in the gauges or some kind of this, uh, this I forgot the name of this bar, but this bar can change color based on the number of the slider. Okay, so this you can also link to the gauges. So you have a uh, half gauge and three by four gauge. We will explore properties of these gauges as well. These gauges are quite new uh, since today. <laughs> so and then you will see some charts so here you can see that the value is coming randomly and based on the time you can see the value of the chart this is just a simulated value you can also further on uh, learn how you can take the plc data or some data source and you can display that in this chart and there you can see this markdown this is a new feature in dashboard 2.0 so it makes it very easy to display data on your dashboard using markdown and you can also have a link here, which I just linked that to the website, Code and Compile, so you can see how you can make hyperlinks in your dashboard. And this is similar to chart, but here instead of single value, you have double value. So you can visualize two parameters on the same chart. So here you can see sensor value one, sensor value two. It's kind of like a comparison in the same chart. Uh, this is like time scale value. It's based on the time. And then further, we'll explore charts, which are X, Y chart. It's not based on time, but based on X and Y value. So you have the X value, and then you have the Y value as well. So X, Y charts. And then we will see how we can have multiple values in X, Y. Okay, these are two charts. So in this case, the data is already there. You just display that on the chart. And in this case, data is coming, and you just uh, check the time at which the data comes, and you make the chart, all right? multiple values, and then you will see a simulated value, but this, in this case, the value is coming, uh, is being stored in an array with the time step and the value, and from the array, you create this chart. The difference between this chart and this chart is the value is not stored. The value is just stored in the chart itself, but not in an array. But here we are storing the value in an array. So here you can also see number of records being stored, 
And here I'm storing 100 values and then I start again from zero. It's just an example. Okay. Furthermore, you will see how you can create bar chart. And this is just the comparison of two values which are randomly being generated here. And then you can also display the value if you have already stored somewhere, not like a random. So you can see the comparison in 2022, 2023, and 2024. Okay. And these three, you can imagine this is coming from this type of a group, multi uh, button group. Okay. And then you can compare the value. So basically, you are sending the value in an object. Then we will explore a template node. In template node, we, are, uh, we can add view components. This will make it very easy and very interesting to add some components which are not in the node red library. You can have a lot of more components. So here I just have a slider which I am using here and you can see that these are the two bars which are following the value of the slider. And that's my uh, circular gauge which is also following the value of the slider. So this gauge is not present in the node red but you can use the component library of view to create your own components. Similarly, this is also not present. So I just showing you two, uh, two elements which I created dynamically and uh, which is behaving dynamically. And I created the view components. I'm going to show you a small code for that. And furthermore, you have two buttons that I created as well. This is for on and off. So these are sending some Boolean values in my, in my, here you can see that in debug window. If I click on this button on, it is sending true to the payload and this is sending false. So you can also define which value you want to show in the payload. If it's not true false, you can also design maybe some string value or some integer. So based on how this button has been created. So we will explore that as well. Last but not the least, you will see there are some buttons which you can create also using template node. So this dashboard 2.0 is basically this page. And if I click on demo page, this will open another page. And on this another page, you can have a specific button called my action Two. So if I click on that, I can show you it's saying button click from demo page. Okay, so this was actually here. So if I go back to dashboard 2.0, it will give me bring me to this page. And if I click on my action one, you can see it says button click from dashboard 2.0 page. So you can find out the ways to create customized button which remains on the top of your page. So maybe this you can use for login, logout, signing, sign out, or any other information that you want. You can bring it from here. And on the left side, you can also see a sidebar. From here, I can also navigate to different pages. You can see the full page name here, the system page. And once you are inside different pages, you can see the notification on your uh, debug uh, node about details about the page. This you can get from here. You can see I have been using some event notes, which will give you the different event what is happening in your dashboard. All right, so we will explore all these nodes and how this dashboard has been created step by step. So we will explore various slides. I can show you, we will begin with the first example, which is form, and then we'll explore tables and input output elements, line charts in, um, in time scale, and then the linear line, uh, line charts, multiple values in time scale values, and then we will see bar chart, categorical, and how to create that. And then notification window, you can also see how we can create that as well. And then you will, we will explore markdowns, how you can use markdowns, and then template nodes. And after that, we will do some even nodes and some exercises so we can create some small dashboard for you to practice your skills. So in the next video, we will start with um, form nodes. And to begin with dashboard 2.0, it's very important that you should install that. In this case, goes to go to the manage palette and just type in the install dashboard 2.0. And maybe just type two. Maybe let's see, there you can find, basically it's from flow fuse. So maybe you can just try flow fuse. And now you can see that node red dashboard, it's dashboard 2.0. So just install this node. This is already installed in my case. Here it is installed. I'm using version 1.8.1. .1. So make sure you install that and then you can start with the next tutorial. And one more thing you can also install, which anyways I will tell you later, but here I have this node also installed. Node Red Dashboard 2 UI LED. So Dashboard 2 has a specific node for LED. Dashboard 1 has 
another specific node, which works only with dashboard one. So make sure you install for dashboard two. So just these two nodes, Node-RED dashboard and Node-RED dashboard two UI NED, make sure you install these two. And then let's see you in the next lesson. Until then, have fun. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you.